Back here in Nashville, getting ready for Ohio and Michigan. John Gross has led this Bobcat team to a new school record for wins of the season. 27 and 7. Here's the starting five. Nick Kellogg, Walter Offit, the transfer from Ohio State, DJ Cooper, Evo Baltic, and John Smith for Ohio. Meanwhile, for Michigan, Zach Novak. Fellow senior Stu Douglas, Trey Burke, the co-freshman of the year in the Big Ten, Tim Hardaway Jr., and the sophomore up front, Jordan Morgan. John Beeline now in his fifth year at Michigan. It's been five years at West Virginia, five years at Richmond, five years at Canisius, nine years at LeMoyne. He has 20 win seasons in NCAA Division I, Division II, NAIA, and junior college. He's been around the block. <laughs> Our officials, Brian Kersey, Raymond Steins, and James Barker tonight for this second round matchup between Michigan and Ohio. Winner here will face the winner of Temple and South Florida, still to come here in Nashville. This is action from the Midwest region. Michigan seated fourth, Ohio seated 13th. Bobcats making their 13th all-time NCAA tournament appearance for Michigan. It's number 23, and Ohio controls the tip. D.J. Cooper, who can be an absolute blur with the basketball, and he runs the show for the Bobcats. First team all-max selection, MVP of the max tournament. Jet shot to open things up as Baltic gets in on the act. Nice little set. We'll see Baltic's team spread the floor a little bit. A lot of screens. There was a nice little tricky screen right there by Cooper to set the big guy up for his jumper to start things off. Novak swings it out front. Tim Hardaway Jr. averaging 14.6 points per game. Zach Novak, versatile, a three-year captain for this squad and known as a glue guy on the Wolverines team. Outside, Hardaway fires, long rebound, it's Cooper. Michigan with floor balance defensively, Trey Burke and Cooper, that's a great matchup. Now it's Kellogg getting a touch. Ohio has won eight of its last nine games. The one loss came to Kent State, jump shot off it. Nice Able to follow it, and a reset. Cooper, he'll hit from anywhere. D.J. Cooper, 31% shooter from long range. He gives Ohio a 5-0 lead. You used the words reset just then, but it didn't take long for him to reload, huh? Let one go, and off they go with a little 5-zip lead. Michigan lost to Duke last year in the round of 32, 73-71. A bump out front. Burke is coming off a rough outing in the semifinals of the Big Ten against Ohio State. And there's Burke. Getting involved right away. He went 1 of 11 against the Buckeyes. The team shot 31% in a 77 to 55 loss. Burke's decisions off the bounce are very, very good. And that play right there is what he loves to do. Way outside for Cooper. The Chicago native out of Seton Academy. Here's Baltic getting a touch. The back end on Novak. He's got the height advantage. The turnaround, no. Smith taps the ball in the air. Good help there by Hardaway to make sure Michigan came away with the defensive rebound. Hardaway turns the corner. Can't get it to go, but a foul. Very nice run out there by Hardaway to get down the right side of the floor, and he recognized that as soon as he was able to catch the ball, he had a little bit of advantage on the right side of the floor to finish. Defensively, guys are going up. Let's see if anybody touches this. Ooh, uh, that's... And they're going to count it. Yeah, I was going to say, that should be a pair right there. It is, and a chance at a three-point play. It wasn't much, but you could see the movement on that replay right. that it affected the trajectory of the ball. So now it's Tim Hardaway Jr., a 72% shooter at the line. Good. Ohio up by one. Coming up. The five seed against the 12. Temple in South Florida. The Bulls advanced after winning in the first four. Kick out. Off it. Thought about it. Baltic knocks it down. Not afraid to give the basketball back and forth, this team. Very well balanced. Everybody gets involved touching the ball and scoring and shooting. Evo Baltic, who went through a rough shooting patch in February, but 
has picked it up and regained his confidence. Hardaway off the breakdown, inside Morgan. Good presence in the paint for this Michigan team. He's young, but they feel like he's got a big upside as he continues to improve, native of Detroit. Yeah, between Hardaway and Burke, two guys who are very effective at setting guys up down low and bringing people to them. Baltic, one dribble, got his man in the air, and now will clear it. Wow, that's a bomb, Cooper! And it's rebounded by Morgan. Ohio opens up three of six from the field. Michigan is three of four. Here's Burke, they show defensively. Forced to give it up, put away, knocks down the triple. The decision by Burke just then, very good too. Hardaway was sitting on the left side, but Burke was thinking of coming back and trying to hit that long shot, just like Cooper tried to put one up also. Good decision in midair. Tim Hardaway Jr., the lanky sophomore from Miami, has given Michigan a 9-7 lead and a foul out front. Morgan helped Burke. And they knocked into Cooper on the outside. Look at the control coming down the floor, and then boom, right down deep, gets Morgan the ball. And here's that decision to switch it over defensively. Everybody's looking at Burke just then to think he's going to take the jump shot. Hardaway wasn't, except for waiting for the ball to come his direction. John Smith to the Ohio bench, replaced by Reggie Keeley, a junior from University Heights, Ohio. Michigan with a two-point lead, four minutes gone by, first half. Keeley, they'll try him down low. The step through, missed it on the inside. Evan Smotrich is in for Michigan. Smotrich is dangerous from long range. Yeah, played pretty well just then. Smotrich was a big factor defensively on that set right there, not letting Keeley get into his real good post setup for to the right side hook. Run the offense through Burke. Burke, the pull up, pop, a three. Rebounded by Baltic. Now it's Kellogg on the push. Michigan, good floor balance defensively. Working around the perimeter, Cooper. Cooper finds a crack to the inside. And he's able to lay it in. DJ Cooper with five. Wow, showing some blazing quickness going to his right that trip to finish it off. Boy, he is shifty. As he works it off the dribble towards the rim. Douglas crowded there by Kellogg, good defender. We're tied at nine. Here's Burke. And a foul called on the outside. Kellogg got the body in on Stu Douglas. We'll step aside. 1453 mark of this first half. Yeah, you take a look at Cooper just then. Beautifully done. Look at that little extra spin to get it go down for a tie score at nine. Now it's time for Powerade Powering Through. Nick Kellogg of Ohio. Yeah, the ability to put the ball on the floor, shoots at long range, and gives them a real good lift from time to time for this Ohio squad. And, of course, the son of our yep. colleague, Clark Kellogg, so there's a pretty good chance that Nick's going to squeeze the orange and trigger Ohio's spurt ability <laughs> at some point. Had a chance to speak with him for a few minutes yesterday. As expected, a very, really very nice. Nice young man. man. Yep. Raised well. And I guess we have to say, just like Clark. Yeah, we got yeah, it. Yeah, we'll be nice to Clark. It's true. Hardaway, short. And Tim's dad is here in attendance. It's Tim Hardaway Jr., of course. The original Tim Hardaway. The UTEP two-step. Yep, there he is. One of the great all-time handles yep. in basketball. An all-star in the NBA. Played 14 years. <laughs> He, he can't hide up there because one thing he could not you couldn't figure out is how he was going to crisscross on you He had a fabulous Left to right right to left crisscross right in front of you the killer crossover. You got it Half court set here for Michigan. We're tied at nine Novak against Cooper the hard drive tip ball out of bounds good defense there from Ohio Michigan will hold on to it. TNT this summer, dig into summer's guiltiest pleasure, Dallas. For the latest on the all-new TNT series, like us on Facebook. Outside, Novak, ball movement, gets it back. Shot clock is down to 10. Smotrich inside, tough angle for Hardaway. Yeah, plus that delivery was down low. I'm surprised Hardaway got, a, got the handle down even to get a shot off. 
That ball was tipped. Hall comes out to get it. T.J. Hall, sophomore from Gainesville, Florida, in for the first time. First little player at both ends of the floor. High screen from Smith. He's back in. Cooper. Hall, oh. fend off. They got him. Yep. Offensive foul. As he knocked into Stu Douglas, it's the first turnover of the night. Watch the right arm. Here it comes. Uh, just not allowed to do that. That's the short. Good call from the officials. Trying to actually, he was kind of out of position just then when he started that play, and that's why the arm came up instinctively to push off to get a little better advantage. We asked John Beeline about his Michigan squad. He said, "Look, we're not quick, we're not long, we're not the most athletic, but we have great team chemistry and no agendas other than winning." And this is how they win. Nice cut. Novak, the leaner, doesn't go. Oh, he screams at himself. How can I miss that shot? Ohio looking to regain the lead. Entry feed. Back in by Keeley. Keeley pumping bodies. That's well done. Crafty play by Reggie Keeley. Yeah, they have him listed, I think, at more weight than what he is, but he's pretty well built that he used at that time to really use the legs to position himself and push around. Listed at 6'8", 263, Ohio with a two-point lead. Douglas feeds out front. Smotrich. Now they get Burke involved with 12 to shoot. Cooper there defensively. Smotrich, the pump, the jumper, book it. Smooth, wasn't it? 6'9", little ball fake, get the defender to fly away, but nice ex execution just then in patience again by Michigan. This half starting to move along pretty quickly because both of these teams, everybody touches the ball, it takes a little while for them to set their offenses up to get some touches and shots off. They felt like the light really went on last year in the NCAA tournament for Smotrich. He scored 13 in the loss to Duke. Br brought some diversity to this yep. squad because of what he can do outside. Pull it feed. Smith fakes out Smotrich. And Smith gets the deuce. Ohio is 6 of 10 from the field. Michigan is 5 of 10. It's a two-point lead for the Bobcats. And when Cooper has the ball, you better keep an eye on him. Because that was a very quick release from outside. Mismatch. Burke. The drive. And a collision as Keeley went down with Burke. And he couldn't convert. Cooper directing traffic, telling people where to stay and where to go find you. Off the spin, no look feed. Cooper gets it back. Oh, very tough delivery on the hesitation by Cooper. I'm not so sure Cooper wanted that ball back as fast as he got it. But he sure did make something out of what appeared to be nothing with the hesitation and the lean. And he really makes this team go. A four point lead for Ohio. Getting to the rim, Stu Douglas. Wraparound foul called on the reach-in. Bobcats are on a 9-2 run. They lead by four. Uh, you take a look. Here, all of a sudden, he comes into the play. Hey, oh, I guess I got to do something with him. Look, that just before he hits the ground, he gets it off. Ernie coming up there. It'll be Notre Dame and Xavier awaiting the winner of Duke and Lehigh. Of course, all the action across four networks. You can pick the game you want. 2012 NCAA tournament. Sounds like Ernie's start, starting to shake me up a little bit with the Duke <laughs> score early on to get me nervous, huh? You think it was a personal <laughs> thing? I think he's going personal right now. 15 11 Ohio. Here's Burke on the outside. Two fouls on Walter Offit. Hardaway off the penetration. Pretty aggressive defensively. Nice kick. Jumper goes. Stu Douglas from deep. One of the things about the Bayline offense is he gets it, the ball going from side to side, and that was perfectly executed. And another foul called. Michigan is going to pick it up as Smith was able to take it on the inside. Yeah, you take a look at that quick release in terms of the pass, a diagonal gets the defense because that's the reason they were slow to react is because they brought the ball all the way to the other side of the floor. You get defensive guys shifting, and Ohio likes to help out on the weak side. Hardaway called on the foul for Michigan. Smith will get a second free throw. Transferred from St. Louis, Columbus, Ohio native, and the top shot blocker on the team. Got 
Big time wingspan. Those long arms. And the second one rattles in. Ohio opens up shooting 64% from the field. Michigan is at 50%. Both of these teams pretty much doing at the offensive end what they've set out to do in the strategy beforehand. Nice skip pass again. Hardaway fires the three. And now it's Stevie Taylor in the game. He's got blazing speed. Outside, Kellogg. Can't hit the triple. And it's rebounded by Burke. Four on two. With it ahead. Hardaway able to recover. Didn't catch it cleanly initially. Yep, and that's why it wasn't a violation. Hardaway's got seven points to lead the Wolverines. Michigan is in the tournament for back-to-back -back years, first time since 95-96. And they haven't been to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament since 1994. Here's Taylor, a freshman. Baltic. Off the back end, Baltic may have traveled, got away with it inside Smith. Not three seconds, probably. And it will be a turnover. Right now, let's take a look at the Infinity Coaches Spotlight. John Gross, who coached in the Big Ten under Thad Mata at Ohio State, and also is familiar with John Beeline because Gross was at Xavier when Beeline was at Richmond. So he comes in fully aware of what Michigan can do and what Beeline does specifically. And he was speaking about his team getting them to buy into both rebounding and defense. Jordan Morgan going hard to the hoop, and a foul called. Two free throws coming up for the sophomore. Well, Gross telling us for Michigan in this matchup, he said, offensively, they're the best team that we've faced this season. They're tough to guard. And the key, try to keep Burke out of the paint, which is a, not an easy thing to do. And he's known Trey Burke since Burke was a kid because he grew up in Columbus, Ohio, going to camps that... John Gross was involved in and helped run, so he knows how tough Burke is. And he said, as good a player as he is, he knows how nice a kid he's been through the years. But how about that? Coming from Columbus, Ohio, and signing on to play at Michigan. Trey Burke was coached in high school by Satch Selinger, that, of course, is Jared right. Selinger's dad. Northland High School, tremendous program. And I'm wondering what Michigan was doing defensively there at half court, but now they're sliding back into his zone. Look, 2-3, look. 18-17, Michigan now in front. Ricardo Johnson is in for Ohio. Long three. DJ Cooper. Unlimited range. Well, he's not getting anywhere near the three-point line. He's way outside. Ten points now for Cooper. He averages 14.6. Here's Burke. He likes the matchup with Bolton. Outside, Smotrich steps through and flips it in. The Reading, Massachusetts native, Evan Smotrich. We are tied at 20. And Burke has switched off to the man-to-man -man again now, and I think he's got the responsibility of getting way out here. I'd get on him right now. It's in his range, it looks like. Cooper using the screen. Morgan helps defensively. Baltic with 10 to shoot. And underneath the basket is wide open. Baltic. Nice maneuver. Evo Baltic. Kansas City, Missouri native. And a junior getting the deuce to put Ohio in front by two. They're shooting 64% from the field. Baltic with the steal. Baltic to the cutter. Kellogg will make it Keeley inside. And a foul called. So it will be Reggie Keeley earning a trip to the free throw line where he shoots it at 67% when we come back. Evo Baltic. He's looked sharp here for Ohio. The Bobcats in front. Game summary here in Nashville, Ohio up by two. Michigan just had its first turnover of the day, 12 minutes in. A happy birthday to Tim Hardaway Jr. turning 20. Ian Eagle along with Jim Spinarco and uh, Lewis Johnson joining us as well here tonight. 
I have to be impressed with DJ Cooper. He's put yep. on an exhibition in this first half for Ohio. He's quick. He gets to the basket very well, but we've also seen him shoot the ball from long range, and I mean extra long range. So interesting so far. Both of these styles playing out. So far, a very competitive game. With eight minutes left here in the first half. Reggie Keeley, second free throw. And he puts Ohio in front by four. Best finish in the NCAAs for Ohio, 1964 regional final. They lost to Michigan, 69-57, off the Hardaway miss. Yep, Baltic clears. A little bit of a drift on that one, even though he was coming towards the basket. He lost his control. Here's Cooper off the penetration, out of bounds off of Michigan. Cooper can find the middle of the floor relatively easily, so watch for him to either try to finish, but more than likely with the squeeze by Michigan to kick out to his shooters. Kellogg's, Kellogg was ready in the left corner that trip. Co-captains back in for Michigan, Douglas and Novak, the seniors, close friends, both from the state of Indiana. Novak from Chesterton and Douglas from Carmel. Keeley, one-on-one -on -one with Morgan. The spin, step through, no. Rebounded by Hardaway. Now trying to push tempo here. Hardaway in transition, had the right idea, but just could not make the connection with Morgan. Second Michigan turnover. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Scores and highlights, latest NCAA tournament news. It's all coming up on AT&T at the half. John Beeline, you and I were in Cleveland. When he led West Virginia with names like Pitsnoggle and Yanzi. Yep. And the rest of that group, including his son Patrick Beeline, to the upset victory over Chris Paul and Wake Forest. One of the best games that you and I have called uh, 15 years ago. Yeah, I think that was top for me. Baltic, rimming no. Rebounded by Burke. Here's Burke. Wow. The give up, and it glances off the hand of Stu Douglas. Out of bounds. The quickness is there, but they're hurrying just a little too much. The last two trips down the floor. John Gross's team and John Bayline's team, both of them fairly well matched, I think. Should be pretty interesting as this game goes on. And not to repeat myself, we had a couple of crazy ones earlier in the day. <laughs> Why not do another third one? Ohio, fourth in the nation in steals, 9.4 per game. So they force a lot of turnovers. They just turned it over with the Baltic travel. Get coverage of the Division I Women's Basketball Tournament at NCAA.com slash Final Four. Alfonso Clark Burke, known as Trey, one of the most exciting freshmen in the country this season. 5'11", 180 pounds. Bump fake by Novak. Novak to the rim. Doesn't go. Morgan offensive rebound. And he lays it in. Terrific work by Morgan on that board. Just really goes after it in terms of being able to finish. And that's why he was the second best shooter in the league. 50, 62 percent. He's always around the glass with his follow-up. Only one ahead of him was Cody Zeller in Indiana in the Big Ten. Six points now for the sophomore Morgan. Cooper in the air. Smith knock away. Last touch by Douglas of Michigan. Well, here's the work. Just misses with the spin. Not high enough on the glass. And then here's his buddy coming in to finish this off. Nice step away to get away from Smith. See how Smith, when he went to the left side, Smith's hand actually got tied up in the net a little bit. So that acted as a defender for him. 24-22, Ohio. Cooper will be the trigger man. 17 to shoot. 5.45 to play in this first half. Off it, back in. Off it, the zigzag to the hoop. Keeley showed he was 265 pounds or so just then, the way he set that screen for his teammate coming across the middle of the floor. Well done to three for an easy one. The deflection. Off it comes up with a loose ball. That's deep. Kellogg drains it. From long range, it's Nick Kellogg, the sophomore from Westerville, Ohio.
Father Clark would be proud of that jumper right there. 42% on the season. That's a long range for young Mr. Kellogg. Ohio has its largest lead, a timeout. Nine-two run for Ohio, and Nick Kellogg hitting the deep three as we bring in the third member of our broadcast team. With more on Kellogg, here's Lewis Johnson. Well, Nick Kellogg is still learning about the great things that his dad, Clark Kellogg, did on the basketball court. Case in point, yesterday after practice, a 50-year-old guy screamed over to Nick to come over for a photo, and as they took the picture, he said that he was at the Ohio State semifinals in Columbus somewhere in the late 70s when his dad, Clark, scored 40 points. And he said, tonight, son, I want you to do the same thing, drop 40 like your dad did. The guy said to me that he was 11 years old. He'll never forget it. Clark was... Uh, was so polite, Nick was polite. He took the photo, signed the autograph, and a classy young man just like his dad, guys. Well, no doubt. It's a great family, and his brother Alex, who played at Providence and was here with Ohio briefly before moving on to Ohio State. Also a terrific young man. 61% shooting for Ohio. Smith couldn't catch it, and it's tracked down by Matt Vogrich, who's in the junior from Lake Forest, Illinois. Trey Burke's been quiet. Just two points. The drive. Douglas thought there was a bump. I think he just stumbled on his own just then and didn't get off the floor very well. No call. They let him play through it. Michigan has gone cold here. Foul called from the perimeter. Zach Novak will pick up his first, and it'll be D.J. Cooper going to the free throw line for three. Yeah, I thought from over here he looked well behind, and he is. Good call from the officials again. Cooper can light up a scoreboard. He put up 43 against St. Bonaventure back in December of 2010 as a sophomore. And some great action going on right now over on CBS. Lehigh leading Duke by two. TBS, St. Louis, and Memphis all tied up at the half. And Purdue and St. Mary's on True TV. They're early there with the Boilermakers in front. How about Missouri, the number two seed going down to 15th seed in Norfolk State in Omaha. This game was tied at 20. Ohio is now on an extended 12-2 run. And with Michigan having trouble shooting the basketball, now down to 9 for 21. Let's see if they can spread the floor and try to get something going with their glass. But this team is good at turning you over. Here we go again. The steal by Johnson. Flip it over to Kellogg. Ball movement. Taylor. Back iron, and Morgan touched it last, it appeared. Out of bounds. 32-22, Ohio in front, a timeout in Nashville. The 2012 NCAA Tournament, this is second round action in the Midwest region in Nashville. Ian Eagle, Jim Spinarco, Lewis Johnson, the rest of our crew here on TNT. Ohio, the 13 seed, leading fourth seeded Michigan with 3.56 to play in this first half. Both teams came out firing. Ohio has maintained it. Michigan has not. Baltic, one-on-one -on -one with Novak. Johnson on a pump. The leaner off the window and way off the mark. Well, one of the differences, Ian, basically has been the first 12 minutes or so. Ohio really didn't force any turnovers with Michigan. Now over the last four mi minutes, Michigan has turned it over five times, so the defense has clamped up a bit. Okay, using both sides. Cross short. Burke short on a three. This is a Michigan team that won a share of the Big Ten regular season title for the first time since the 85-86 season. They did get pummeled in the Big Ten semifinals, but they have not lost consecutive games this season. Winner here will play the winner of Temple and South Florida still to come here in Nashville. 
that was kicked, wasn't it? It was. 301 mark now in the first half, and we will see some changes here as TJ Hall checks in, replacing Johnson. Stevie Taylor takes a seat as well for Ohio. Looking forward to that Temple game after this one, Iron, with the South Florida with the way they play defense. Temple with the three guard oriented offense with some veteran players there. After every loss this season, Michigan has followed it up with a win and the average margin of victory just under 11 points per game. Right now they're in a 10 point hole. Kellogg, clean look, book it. A three, smoking. He's getting some rhythm, he's getting the good looks. He's got a little bit of bounce to him. Saying, I'm willing to take the shot if you find me. Second three for Nick Kellogg. It's a 13-point lead for Ohio. Douglas, back of the iron, gotcha. bodies flying. Baltic goes down, as does Novak. And it's going the other way. Foul called on Zach Novak. It's an 11-0 run now for Ohio. You can see Kellogg just waiting it out. Desperately waiting for that ball to get to him because he just felt like it was going to be good from the start to finish. He has made three times as many threes as he has twos this year. So the scouting report is pretty clear on Nick Kellogg, although John Gross saying he has added to his game. He's added that intermediate offensive game as well, just trying to keep defenses honest. Here's Cooper. Wow. Take it away. And now Burke. Accelerating to the rim, and he throws it down. Pretty easily, too, for a 5'11 guy just then. Won a state title in 2009 with Northland. 97-5 record in high school. This is an 11-point lead for Ohio. Ohio moving well without the ball. The entry, Keeley. Now he got caught underneath with nowhere to go, and he was hoping to find a teammate. Watch Burke come from nowhere. Nice trip there on Cooper. And let's go upstairs. He's, he's anticipating at that point. Defender might take a run at him and try to block that shot. So he figured let him get to the rim with two hands with some strength. Hardaway got off to the quick start. That's a three. Bottom. Jim Hardaway Jr. now with 10. Yeah, all of a sudden a steal for a layup dunk, a three-pointer, and Michigan gets a little punch in the arm. They get themselves going a little bit, and they get on a bit of a roll. Watch every 2012 March Madness game live on your computer, iPad, iPhone, or select Android phones with NCAA March Madness Live. Visit NCAA.com slash March Madness for more information. Now, this is going to be a straightforward jump shot, but watch the spacing as this play develops, and look at the yellow shirts on the floor. You can't even find the fifth guy because they're spaced so well. Now he comes into the picture, and then you get a little jumper because it's one-on-one -on -one if you don't get the reaction hard away nailing that one, but boy, do they ever keep the middle of the floor open for drives. Jimmy, those are those are maze. maze. Oh. Just a slight adjustment. 35-27. I never knew you were that artistically inclined. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They're all about colors. Kellogg, the three. In and out. It was halfway down. He can't believe it didn't finish. Burke weaving his way through traffic. Back in by Morgan. Turns. 30 seconds. Nope. The pirouette. Tip in. Goes down. Sticking with the play. Smotrich. 7-0 run, a first here for Michigan. And how about Morgan's ability to use the pivot foot and not travel down deep, which set the play up. Cooper to off it. He got into foul trouble early. Give it up. Baltic. Fade away, doesn't go. Oh, look at this. They got somebody down. Here's Burke. Poked away, and Burke went down hard. Baltic got a piece and knocked out of bounds. Yeah, was that off Cooper's foot? It was. So Michigan will get it back with 33.8 left on the clock. Well, let's take a look. A little bit of speed here, huh? So far, no foul. Yeah, I think that's a good no call right there from the officials. Ohio 35, Michigan 29. And the Wolverines can hold for one. 30 seconds left. Samotrich. Now Douglas being watched by Kellogg. Down to 22 seconds remaining. And both teams with five team fouls, so if you do get in trouble and you need to use it, 
Not a bad option. Michigan's been an underdog the last two years in the NCAA tournament. This is a little different role here. Nine seconds left. Hardaway with seven. Here we go. Burke with five. Burke. The three. Short. Morgan's got time. Couldn't secure it. As time runs out in this first half, Ohio shoots 52% from the field, but Michigan ends the half on a 7-0 run. It's the Bobcats in front, 35-29 to at the break. Michigan ends up shooting 43% from the field, just 3 of 11 from three-point range. We check in with Lewis Johnson. All right, John, how do you assess this first half? Well, I thought we played pretty well. Then we had a couple turnovers there and gave them a couple pick sixes at the end of the half. But, you know, we played well. I thought we defended fairly well. we got to continue to defend the three-point line. You also were tied at 20 at one point and went on a nice run. What does that tell you about the possibilities for the second half? Well, it's good. I mean, obviously, we were able to get consecutive stops, and we're at our best when we defend. All right, thanks. Thanks, Lewis. Ryan? All right, Lewis, end of the first half. Ohio with a 35 to 29 lead on Michigan. We'll send you to AT&T at the half after these messages. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Just about set for second half action here in Nashville, Ohio, 35, Michigan, 29 moments ago. Lewis Johnson caught up with John Beeline. Coach, you up against a good defensive team. Only three free throw attempts. How do you get yourself to the charity stripe a little bit you more? You know what? We, sometimes we took it to the basket. We just didn't finish. You know, they didn't follow us, but we didn't finish. Uh, we got to keep driving it in there. They're very good at defending the three. So we got to keep driving it in there under control, finish our laps, and then we'll get fouled a little bit. Okay, thanks. Thank you. All right, Lewis, thanks very much. Ian Eagle along with Jim Spinarkle. No doubt Michigan is trying to take that next step as a right. program right now under John Beeline, and they're going up against a very good Ohio squad. Their record was excellent yep. and certainly not intimidated by the idea of playing a Big Ten team. Yeah, I think Lewis's question was right on the money in terms of to John Beeline getting his team to drive a little bit more and finish going down deep. That's something they haven't been doing real well. Ohio, on the other hand, loves to play defense. They will clamp down on as much as they can. They have D.J. Cooper who's been doing it from start to finish. Long-range shooting, putting it on the floor, making things happen early on, and finding his teammates. A nice combination of work by D.J. Cooper in the first half to set the tone for Ohio. First half numbers, Ohio shoots it at 52%, four of nine from three-point territory. Didn't miss a free throw. Only five fouls called on each side. Cooper with 13 points. Hardaway Jr., the high man for Michigan, with 10. But Cooper did not have a field goal attempt over the last nine minutes of the first half. Yeah, I thought it was a fairly well-played first half. They both had the seven turnovers, but trying to get into their sets, I think one thing... And be worth repeating. See if Michigan can put it on the floor with their guards and go towards the basket rather than just around the horn. And the seniors have been limited. Douglas and Novak, three points combined. There's Novak. Gives up his dribble. Burton will back it out with 15 to shoot. Six-point lead for Ohio, the 13 seed in the Midwest. Morgan, six to shoot. Morgan, the back in. Morgan. Can't get it to go. Lunging attempt. Doesn't go down for Novak. Ohio will get into a set here. First minute of play of this second half. DJ Cooper. Freshman of the year going back to his first season in the Mid-American Conference. And his game is just getting better and better. Also, if anything... I think the biggest difference has been the physical part, right? You talk to John Gross, he says, end of his freshman year, he was weighing in at about a buck 44. He's now at about 174. Well, a lot of us put on some weight over the years. <laughs> is that good weight or bad weight? Shot clock is down to six. Baltic with five. Bumping bodies with Novak. Baltic with two, with one. Sticks the turnaround. Evo Baltic has eight. Boy, did he ever cover a lot of real estate to get that shot off. And even when he decided to go into his shot, he was floating away from the hoop still. Comfortable out on the perimeter with the shot clock winding down. He nails it to give Ohio a 37-29 lead. Hardaway. 
Smith came out and fouled him in three-point territory. So Tim Hardaway Jr. will shoot three. We'll take a look where he starts here, working his way in across the floor, and then stops and drifts even further away. Hit a couple of nice jumpers in the first half, and a good start to the second one for Baltic. First foul against John Smith of Ohio. Tim Hardaway Jr., 72% shooter. He's built a reputation as a gym rat, constantly working on his game. Third team all Big Ten this year. I think the officials are going to check. Two defenders were right up there. I'm guessing that they're going to either look at whether it was a three, which I thought it was, or make the decision on who the fouler is. Yeah, he was clearly behind, but you see the two of them. This, this may be just pick which either side you feel like. I think both of them may have glanced at him. Can you go half foul, Jimmy? <laughs> One's got two and a half, the other's three and a half. <laughs> New, rules. That way. New rules. Again, on the live look, it looked like John Smith. And they were just trying to confirm whether or not his foot was behind the line. It was. And Hardaway now at the strike. Part of the Team USA under-19 squad last summer. Went through a major slump in January, then snapped out of it in February. And he's back to being a consistent double-digit scorer. And this is on the second attempt. Third one coming with Michigan down by seven. 23 points shy of 1,000 in his career. Good-looking stroke at the line, though. A different body type than his dad. Yes. Tim Hardaway was strong. He was built like a fire hydrant. And Tim Hardaway Jr., much lankier. Smith, good position. Rebounded by Morgan for Michigan. No back good defensive position also, even though he was outsized. Hardaway a three. No. Nice work. The box out. Novak gets it to go off the window. Nice to be a lefty once in a while with that strength on that side. He needed every bit of it to get that shot up off the glass. Cooper against the grain. He gets the roll. You are absolutely right on it there. How do you get that one to go when you're moving to your right so quickly and then reload and relocate? So the lefty DJ Cooper continues to impress. He's got 15 points. That's just above his season average of 14.6. Hardaway on the crossover. Book it. And that's got a nice ring to it. Hardaway on the crossover. Yep. Just like that, that's for sure. 14 now for Tim Hardaway Jr. Out of Palmetto Senior High School in Miami. Cooper off the double. Trying to find the open man. Walter off it. Runs into Hardaway and a foul called against Hardaway of Michigan. And we'll take a look at Hardaway up top. His little cross there, and look at the pull-up. And notice that the ball is way up over his head, and I don't think he ever establishes. Yeah, that's a good call from the officials. Never gets the right foot, baseline side down, planted. Close, but not there quick enough defensively, so the right call from the officials. Just about three minutes gone by in the second half. Michigan has cut the Ohio lead to four. Stop and go by Kellogg. Outside now, Keeley is in. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Cooper against Hardaway. Cooper. Off it. Doesn't take the three. Cooper will. Buries it. Cooper is shooting that ball so comfortably out there. You almost don't have to look at the basket. You just feel that it's going in because looking at him, he looks just so confident. That was great ball side work for Ohio. They just passed it, went one side back again. He was just wide open. 18 for D.J. Cooper. And a foul call on the outside as Douglas made his move on Nick Kellogg. Now watch this, Ian. He's wide open. I want to tell you, that's difficult to do sometimes when you have that much time to shoot. Makes it look very easy. Six of seven from the field. Cooper with 18 to lead Ohio. Hardaway Jr. has 14. He's the high man for Michigan. This is why I think you're going to have to see Trey Burke get just a little bit more involved, whether he scores or not, but breaking people down. But him and Cooper matched up right now. Burke averaged just under 15 points per game during the season. He's got four on two of six shooting. Morgan. 
Alex Burke. We have Burke 16 minutes to play in the second half. Seven point lead for Ohio. Here's Burke. Kick out, Stu Douglas. Eight to shoot. Well defended again. Isolation against Kellogg. Douglas the drive. The turnaround. Count it. Yeah, you know, if you're from Ohio on that set iron, you cannot knock the defense at all. If you have to have a guy come in, they work the clock down so far, fall away, shooting that 15 footer. I guess you got to settle if you're Ohio right there. Douglas, 136th game at Michigan. That is a new school record. 42 37 Ohio. Cooper, they chase him down with a double. He gets rid of it when the double's coming his way, though. Back out, Smith working around the perimeter. Cooper using the screen, can't hit the three. Morgan secures it. And now it's Burke on the move, up ahead. Douglas in attack mode, layup, no! Off it with a rebound. And Ohio comes the other way, working at five on four. Burke trying to get back defensively. There's that guy. Nobody home. Cooper thought he was going to get Smith cutting towards the rim. It didn't happen. Ohio and Michigan. Second half action continues in Nashville. Johnson back in Nashville as second round action continues between Ohio leading Michigan 42 to 37. So I thought I'd climb up here in the stands and find Tim Hardaway Sr. 14 years in the league and now you are watching your son Junior out here on the court. What are your thoughts? You look like you're having fun or are you just worried to death? What's happening up here? Well, I'm having fun, but I am worried to death. You know, uh, you know, I, I want the team to excel. You know, I want him to excel, but, um, you know, it's just... Um, they got to come bring it now. You know, they let Ohio get a lot of confidence and they making plays and we're not at times. He told me yesterday that when he was a junior in high school, the light went off and he decided he wanted to be serious about the game as we have the big three there by Michigan. So how much did you help him really begin to get to where he is right now? Well, you know, I just said, you know, I can't teach height. You got height, something I never had. But you know what? We're going to work with it, and, and you're going to get your jump together. You're going to get confident going to the hole, making plays at the basket. And, uh, you know, you just got to have confidence in your game, and he's starting to have confidence in his game. Maybe one of the best compliments you can have is to hear Ian Eagle and Jim Spadarco call the crossover dribble by your son. <laughs> you were the crossover king. Yes, I was crossover king, and, uh, you know, i like to see him cross over and get to the hole and get to, you know, 15-foot, 12-foot jump shots where you can make that. All right, Tim, enjoy the rest of the game. All right, thank you. Yes! Oh, yeah. On cue, Hardaway Jr. nearly finished it. Lewis, thanks so much. Catching up with Tim Hardaway, now a big Michigan fan, of course. A star at UTEP. Inside, Keeley tried to clear out Smotrich, who just hit on the three, but off it answered with a dribble drive to the hole. And Hardaway Jr. can't believe he missed that one from point blank range. Yeah, with Hardaway's dad, too, with that crossover iron, he would have never lost me because I would have never moved on the first one. <laughs> I was so slow. I would have I would have been there when he came back on it. Four-point lead for Ohio. 14 minutes to play in this second half. Keeley, the back in. Left hand, doesn't oh. go, and a late whistle, but a foul. Help came from Novak as he bumped into Smotrich. TNT this summer, our greatest threat is yet to come from TNT and DreamWorks Television. Falling skies for the latest on the new season. Like us on Facebook. Reggie Keeley, a bruiser, a presence in the paint. At the free throw line, Ohio is 7 of 7 from the line tonight. Now 8 of 8. Keeley is 3 of 3, junior from Cleveland Heights High School. And now Novak will sit, replaced by Jordan Morgan. So they'll go a little bigger up front. This is a team that's used to playing basically four guards. Zach Novak is six foot four and is often slotted into that power forward spot. Yeah, and this is a time where some you may see the guards put that ball down and set the bigs up, cut to the basket on the blocks. Trey Burke. Outside. Smotrich nails it a three. What a difference he's made coming off the bench. 12 points, one of the best shooting big men in the country. Well, the big Larry Bird fan to boot. Baltic knocks it down. That's a long two-pointer for Evo Baltic. Well, though the big though stepping away from the basket and shooting it very confidently. 10 points now for Evo Baltic. 
48-43, Ohio. Spin move. Burke. Oh, going to take down underneath. And it's going to work against Ohio. Foul called on T.J. Hall. Tournament summary. Norfolk State, the 15th seed, knocking off number two, Missouri. The Big Ten undefeated right now with Wisconsin, Indiana, Ohio State all winning. 11th seeded teams now 7-5 and five in the round of 64 since 2010. NC State and Colorado getting wins this year. Boy, that changes that line with the two seeds, huh, with Missouri going down. Kind of like a big wow across the country in terms of what happened there. Terrific job, though, by Norfolk State. Here's Burke. Just waiting to see him take over a bit. Has it happened? Turn around. Gets the roll. It's Morgan with a soft touch on the inside for the Wolverines. And not an easy one either because he had that position originally. I thought he could have gone first with his initial move but hesitated and then had to throw up a fall away just then. Offit makes his move on Burke. Offit. Off the window, and he gets the roll. Walter Offit from Indianapolis. He goes way back with Stu Douglas and Zach Novak back to their Indiana AAU days. Offit, a little detour to Wright State after Ohio State, but ends up with John Gross, who recruited him to the Buckeyes. Douglas lost the ball, scooped up, far away, misses again on the inside, and Baltic able to save. Hardaway never had the legs underneath him. He was just losing the balance, and he tried to put it up before he fell. DJ Cooper swings it. Ball fake, ball fake. Off it. Offers it up. Can't hit the three, and it's rebounded by Morgan. Boy, once again, Ohio really putting the ball on the deck, side to side, making life real easy for the teammates to get good looks. Unfortunately, they couldn't come away with that. Over on CBS, Duke and Lehigh. Blue Devils now in front. TBS, St. Louis and Memphis in a tight one. And on True TV, Purdue leading St. Mary's. Burke had to redirect because of the length of Smith. And what's the question here? The whistle blew. Michigan can't call a timeout off a rebound. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened just then. Unless there's some blood on the jersey of Morgan. So we'll step aside. Evan Smotrich coming off the bench and giving Michigan a big lift, but they still trail by five. Thanks very much here. Ohio leads Michigan 50 to 45. So that's the 13 seed on top of the four seed with 11.25 to play here in the Midwest region. Second round action. And still to come, it will be Temple out of the Atlantic 10 in South Florida from the Big East. DJ Cooper, 16 to shoot. Jump shot. TJ Hall, a three. 27% shooter from long range. And he looked confident stroking that one. But he has hit some big shots down the stretch in a few of their games from long range recently. Ohio is now 6 of 13 from three-point territory. Hardaway had it taken away for a moment and then able to clear for Burke. Working around the perimeter. Every player on Ohio plays tough man-to-man. -man. They help one another with enough switches. Yeah. Reach-in foul called. As Cooper came out to guard him. And going to that break, by the way, there was a timeout because there was some blood on Jordan Morgan, and he got a wrap during the break on his right elbow. Yeah, you see that shot by Hall just then. Once again, good delivery, nice spacing. Both of these teams spaced the floor so very well. So now Morgan will sit. 52% in the first half for Ohio. They are 7 of 10 in the second half. Michigan trails by eight. Novak. For Smotrich. Kick out. Hardaway lets it fly. Online, but a little too strong. Knocked out 
by Novak. Michigan is at 40% in this half. Smotrich gets the roll and one. What an impact. The sophomore Evan Smotrich. And if you remember back to half when Lewis Johnson spoke to John Beeline, what did they talk about? Putting the ball on the floor, getting to the glass, making things happen. I think you have to see Michigan do a little bit more of this because Ohio keeps coming out chest to chest, playing tough defense. It's a great time to drive by somebody if you can get your shoulders by them with the first step. Third foul on T.J. Hall. 15 points for Smotrich. 53-48 Ohio. We are past the halfway point of the second half. Size advantage down here. Baltic turns on Novak. Both teams, when they recognize that they don't have something, they kick it out. Cooper splits defenders to the rim. Switching hands. DJ Cooper. He gives you the exact impression that he's going to barrel right into you and jump into you and try to go over you at the last moment, though. Has the ability to switch in midair. Burke. Wow. Kick out. Hardaway drives in. Outside, Douglas fires, can't hit the three. And it's rebounded. Baltic was hit on his way down. And we take a look at Cooper flying to the basket. Now notice, doesn't he look like he's going this way? And then at the last second, he avoids contact, puts the shot in. It's amazing how he just stops and jumps in a different direction to finish it off. Quite a move by Cooper. Third foul against Evan Smotrich. 55-48, Ohio in front. This year, enjoy more madness with Coke Zero. Text DUNK to 2653 for a chance to win a trip to the 2012 NCAA Men's Final Four. DJ Cooper, the junior from Chicago, and at times has simply taken over the game offensively. He really has, showing us a little bit of everything. Drives to the basket, flips, missing the charges. Solid play from Cooper all around in terms of setting the tone. Seven of nine from the floor. Not a bad evening. So Ohio leads it by seven. We approach nine minutes to go in this second half. Michigan, three NCAA tournaments in the last four years. This year, the focus, get to the second weekend. Take that next step. Keeley, a back in, one-on-one with Hardaway. He's got the bulk advantage, can't finish around the rim. Foul call that'll work against Michigan. That'll be the 15 foul against the Wolverines. So Hardaway was trying to use his body in on Reggie Keeley. And then players got tied up underneath. Position right here. Go the other way, though. There's Offit. Under nine minutes to play. Cooper. Fend off. The no-look feed inside. Keeley is fouled. Ryan, did you notice how Cooper was going away from the basket with two guys on him just then trying to get a double team? And he reacts so quickly when he sees it come his way. Watch him go away from the basket. And then he whips it down to the diagonal cut down deep again to Keeley. That's just an extraordinary pass from that far out on the floor. Second foul on Trey Burke. Keeley back to the free throw line. Got a good looking stroke. Yep. 67% shooter. Among the leaders in field goal percentage in the MAC at 53%. They are quietly wearing down Michigan. Reggie Keeley, the most minutes as a reserve in the MAC conference this season. 9.2 points per game. He is six of six from the free throw line. And he's come off the bench to score eight. Ohio leads by nine. Eight, 40 mark. Second half. Burke using the screen. Now a switch. He's got the bigger Keeley. Burke wants to take him off the dribble. The drive. Foul called. Keeley blocked the shot, but there must have been some contact there to draw the attention of the officials. It's a good time to go after somebody, and there's the body before. Now, most people, especially the people 
halfway up in the first section or in the above sections will look down on that play and say that was a good block, but they missed the lower call that the officials caught with the body bump. 74% free throw shooter, Trey Burke. It's only his first attempt of the night, though. Yeah, Kellogg in. He replaces Ricardo Johnson. Burke now with five points. He's two of eight from the field. Everybody was curious. How would he respond after the one of 11 performance against Ohio State in the Big Ten semifinals? And it's been a struggle offensively for the co-Big Ten freshman of the year, along with Cody Zeller of Indiana. Seven-point lead for the Bobcats. Yeah, look at the action away from the ball again. Keeley, double team. Cooper will drive. Dish. Yeah. Keeley, big shot goes. Again, the Cooper delivery, and again, bringing it towards the middle, and then veering with who is right just a little bit to get the big to really just react enough to squeeze it to his teammate. And Ohio has been able to maintain this comfortable lead. 58% shooting for the Bobcats. Smotrich. Now it's Hardaway. Shot clock is down to 10. Here's Burke. Seven to shoot. Burke against Reggie Keeley. Burke the drive. Left hand. He finishes. Now he's picking that matchup apart, isn't he? He's looking for it. They're getting it. Ohio's going to have to make an adjustment on that. Not to knock Keeley. Not too many guys can keep Burke away from the basket when he puts it on the deck. As you see up at the top of your screen, St. Louis has gotten the win over Memphis in Columbus. Wow. So a victory for the A-10 there. Over Conference USA, Baltic. Got a good look at it. Rimming out. Rebounded by Burke. This is a seven-point game. The drive. Offensive oh, foul, Zach Novak. And it was off it. Who took the hit? Ohio leads it 59 to 52. Seven minutes to play in Nashville. Ernie, thanks very much. And guys like Jim Spinarkle, the nerves are starting to enter the equation here. What's that? <laughs> did you did you pay attention to the update, Jimmy? Uh, I'm not. I'm I'm going anti Ernie right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. You take until it personally start, until he starts giving me some better updates. No, no, no. He, <laughs> he's just providing the updates. He doesn't actually play the games. You've heard that expression, don't shoot the messenger. Yeah, exactly. 59-52, <laughs> Ohio, the 13th seed in the Midwest, leading fourth seeded Michigan with under seven minutes to play now in Nashville. Here's Austin facing the rim. Can't hit it. And it's Smotrich for the board. That's a shot I thought he was going to put down just then. He's been very comfortable shooting the ball at 15 feet away. Only one turnover in the second half for Michigan. Burke fires to the corner. Novak will clear for Douglas. Expect Michigan to catch and put it on the floor a little bit. Everybody get involved with the smaller lineup that they have right now. Burke, the crossover. Hard drive. Gets the contact. And he's going to the free throw line. So Trey Burke... The catalyst there making it happen for Michigan. He's getting those advantages oh! on it because he's ending up with the big guarding him out front. That time it was Baltic. We've seen Keeley. He's just too quick for a 6 8 guy to be able for a 6 8 guy to stop him and direct him to someone of his teammates. It's just not going to happen. Second foul on Evo Baltic of Ohio. Trey Burke. Mr. Basketball in the state of Ohio as a senior. And the way that John Beeline described him, unflappable. He handles prosperity the same way that he handles adversity, just consistent across the board throughout his freshman season. Yeah, consistent is the word for him. Seven times the Big Ten flash of the week. That's not a bad season. Kellogg handles it for Ohio. This is a five-point game. Cooper comes to the ball. 
A shadow Cooper with the much bigger Smotrich. They're going to switch that. They do with <laughs> Novak, who's going to go by somebody. 14 to shoot. Look at him handle the ball. Foul called. And it's in the act of shooting. Zach Novak drawing the assignment. And it's number four on the senior from Chesterton, Indiana. He's been a veteran leader for this squad. His father, Dave, has put on 100,000 miles on his car, driving around the Midwest following Zach's career. And his mom is also just as involved. Same thing with the Douglas family as well. Watch the tail end of this play, the way Cooper leans in at the last second. Ooh. Oh, man. He took a shot. He sure did. And then you have the coach come over to tell you to put your hands straight up. And I couldn't get my hands straight up because he just whacked me in the chin. One out of two for D.J. Cooper. That was the first miss of the free throw line for Ohio tonight. Yeah. 12 to 13. 60 to 54. Bobcats leading the Wolverines. Burke on a switch. Now they switch back with Kellogg. Burke. He'll take the three. Knocks it down. We talked about consistent. You talk about just being able to make the right decision. He saw the last two trips. He had big guys on him. So he decided to go by them. This time Kellogg switches at 6-3. And... Burke makes a terrific decision as Kellogg slides back. Look at where he is. He's four feet away from him. Not enough time to get back. We got another game on our hands here in Nashville. Ohio is shooting it at 55%, making three pointers, six of 13. But Michigan has been able to hang around. Ohio was never able to bring that lead into the double digit area 12 points, 13 points. Michigan has now cut this game to three with 526 to play. You couldn't ask for a better setup for the last five and change right here. Both of these teams going after one another defensively. Let's see who makes the best decisions with the ball. The drive off it spins to the rim and draws the foul. Hardaway Jr. saying that his arms were straight up. You had Morgan in the area as well. And it's number four on Tim Hardaway Jr. Both of these teams are very good at creating the contact opportunities at the tail end of their drives to the bucket. Upsets, nothing new for Ohio. As a 14 seed two years ago, they beat Georgetown 97 to 83, and DJ Cooper had 23 in the NCAA tournament win. Now it's Walter Offit at the free throw line, a 71% shooter out of Warren Central High School. Hardaway will sit. John Beeline coaching up his sophomore. And yeah, interesting with this guy at the line off it. One of the things in the scouting report on him, Ian, is he takes advantage of the smaller guards. He actually picks on them. And we've seen him do that a couple of times where he's brought the guard down off the bounce, knowing that he's going to yeah. overpower them. 61, 57 Ohio. Five minutes to play, second half. 2-3 zone look right now. Let's see if Michigan gets somebody to the middle of the floor. Smotrich nearly lost it. Offensive foul. And it was Keeley taking the hit. That's number four on Evan Smotrich. I think if this player defensively doesn't fall down, I think they let this go. But at the end of the day, you know what the call is. It's an offensive foul because you lost control of your body. Even though he lost control of the ball, he still has to control his body on that play. And now the foul trouble is piling up for Michigan. Smotrich with four. Hardaway with four. Novak with four. John Beeline sends Novak back into the game. It's Hardaway and Smotrich on the bench for the Wolverines. Ohio 61, Michigan 57. We are under five minutes to play. Second half in Nashville. Offit using the screen. Wow. The dribble drive explodes to the rim for two. Boy, did he come a long way to earn that play. And once again, just as we touched on, taking advantage of the smaller guys trying to guard him. 
Nice decision here by Ohio to go back into his zone and stay in at the second trip in a row. John Gross telling us that Offit and Smith have been the biggest difference from last year's team to this year's team. The intangibles, the physicality they bring. Novak on a kick out. They need this a three. They got it! Trey Burke drains it. Nice decision, too, by Novak to kick it out. He got in there. I thought he had an opportunity for a layup. It closed so fast. He looks around. There's no place to go. And Burke just waiting for the long free throw attempt. 16 for Burke. Three-point lead for Ohio. They double up on Cooper. Down to 349 remaining. Cooper being defended by Burke. Short on a long three. Tracked down by Keeley. Big play for Ohio. And Keeley had to come from about three feet from the basket and got that about 17 feet out off the dribble. Off it calls out a play. Three and a half to go. Timeout, John Gross. Yeah, I didn't like that shot by Cooper just then. I, I know he's trying to throw a knockout punch, but look at this guy. Off it coming around the corner to sink that one. Big time bucket and drive to the basket for Ohio. Get exclusive in-game video highlights, up-to-the-minute scores and stats of all NCAA March Madness games at NCAA.com. Ohio and Michigan, 13 versus a four in the Midwest region. John Gross, John Beeline, and a three-point lead for the Bobcats with 3.24 to play. Ohio with the basketball. Michigan showing zone now also. Around the perimeter. Off it. That's where you want to go with it. Corner pop. Doesn't go for Kellogg. And a battle for the loose ball. Last touch by Keeley of Ohio. Michigan will have it when we come back. Just over three minutes to play. Ohio almost got another opportunity here. They're holding on to a three-point edge. Uh, maybe it is personal. <laughs> I'm not apologizing yet, Ernie. <laughs> well, let's go back. Oh, oh look, look at that. This. Well, what is happening oh, there? I don't exactly. know what happens there. Was that a pass? You think those shorts make my thighs look <laughs> big and thick? <laughs> I'm going to say that's rhetorical, that question. I'm not going to answer. 63 to 60, Ohio in front with 258 to play over Michigan. Smotrick oh, had it denied on the inside. He went aggressively to the hole but couldn't finish it as Walter Offit again providing the edge for Ohio. Bobcats lead by three. We're down to 2.35 to go. Here's Cooper. Against Douglas. Goes behind the back with the dribble. The penetration. The floater. No. Smotrich with a rebound. Nice job by Douglas just then. Hanging with the faster Cooper. No, you didn't. You didn't say hanging with Mr. Cooper, did you? Oh, sorry. Burke <laughs> off the back of the iron, and it's rebounded by Kellogg. Three-point lead for Ohio. And that was an example there, too, with Burke had the big guy guarding him, so it could have been a little bit more patient, probably. Two minutes to play. Cooper way outside. Shot clock is down to 15. Cooper gives it up. Now it's Austin. Austin with that strong drive. Kellogg with nine. Austin the back in. Seven to shoot. Takes a look at the clock. Fires up the three. No good. Rebounded by Smotrich. Michigan. It's a one possession game with a minute 37 to go. The drive bounce outside for Novak. Slow it down a second. <laughs> there you go. John Beeline on. Timeout. Michigan down by three with 1.32 to play. Game reset. Ohio has the possession arrow. Two timeouts remaining for each team. Michigan already with 10 fouls. Ohio with 17 fouls. Michigan with the basketball. Down by three. What's John Beeline talking about here with his squad? One of the things about John Beeline's team is because they have the four guards, what they try to do is put it on the deck a lot 
to look for advantages where they have size matchups or speed matchups. So let's watch to see if they get an interchange. And I don't know if John Gross is going to do that. He's going to try to maybe stay firm with everybody because if you get a mismatch, that's where Michigan is very, very good. And they're not shy from long range. They attempted more threes than any team in the Big Ten this year. They trail by three. 127 and counting left in the second half. Here's Burt in a matchup with Austin. And here's your switch. Let's see if they take advantage of it. Burt against Baltic. He's going to try it again, though. Reload, face, and go. Burt. The drive, the kick. Corner pop, Novak. Can't hit the three. Hardaway tried to snare it. Bounces it off of Offit. But he was out of bounds, and it touched him. Wow. Is that ever close in a couple of ways? Not only going out of bounds, he gets his hands on the ball, tries to save it, he gets around. Wow. That ball may have hit Hardaway down low as he was standing out of bounds. That's right. That was the indication from the official. One minute to play. Ohio up by three on Michigan. Here's the pressure. Be careful in that corner. He stepped out of bounds. What great pressure by Burke on the sideline just then. Big turnover as Kellogg lost track of where he was along the sideline. His initial mistake just then, I was to back himself into no man's lane. You see that dribble right there? Look where he put himself. He put himself right in the corner against the back court. So the only way you can go at that point is along the sidelines, and he hit it. 50 seconds to play. Three-point lead for Ohio. You don't need the three, though. Nothing wrong with taking it to the basket. Burke for the tie. No good. Knocked out of bounds. And Michigan holds on to it with 40 seconds to play. They are 7 of 21 from three-point range. Watch the traffic here. Who gets the hand on it? Oh, oh. oh. Evan Smotrich appeared to knock it out last. And I don't even think that was close. A timeout with 40 seconds left in a three-point game. Now that is one of those plays in college basketball that cannot be reviewed. Who touched it last? It clearly came off Smotrich of Michigan. The Wolverines catch a break. Syracuse game yesterday, same type of situation, right? And I believe John Adams, heads of, head of officials, Made the comment, stepped right up, said that call was not made correctly. North Carolina, Asheville on the short end of that call. We'll see what transpires here with 40.1 remaining. Michigan down by three. Stu Douglas will trigger in for the Wolverines. Let's see what a little strategy here. I am going down the stretch. Even though you're down by three, doesn't mean you need a three. Go to the basket with the ball if you can. Look at the way they're pressuring out front. Catch it to go by some, somebody first to create an opportunity. Four second different shot clock to game clock. Three point lead for Ohio. Burke over Baltic. Can't hit the three. Rebound, knocked out of bounds. And last touch by Ohio's Johnson. Good call right there. Good effort by both guys, and clearly it's going to be Michigan ball. 17.7 left on the clock. Michigan trailing Ohio by three. Depending on how long they take right now to get into their set, they may be forced to go for the three. Yep, they're getting close to the time where they're not going to be able to go. Ten seconds left. They might get a foul. Smotrich turns it over. Foul call. Walter Offit is going to the free throw line. And Ohio with a chance to add to its lead with 6.8 remaining. Smotrich has fouled out. Oh, he just crisscrossed. I don't even think that ball was hit then. He just didn't handle it properly. Burke, uh, two steps away. Good step in there, too. Step aside, a three-point lead for Ohio in Nashville. Smotrich has fouled out. Hardaway and Novak four apiece. Right now, it's Offit at the line. It's a four-point lead. Walter Offit, the junior, has made this a two-possession game with 6.8 remaining. 
One more free throw coming for Ohio when we come back. Look at the game reset. John Beeline's team took four straight threes yep. looking for the tie and missed on all four attempts. Yeah, that's why I, I love the three-point shot in the game, but sometimes it can just take you out of the proper strategy down the stretch. You see three on the scoreboard, you say, we need three. You have plenty of time to get that three if you need it. Off it. Nails the second. Five-point lead for Ohio. Five seconds left. Burke, the heave for three, in and out, and it's over. March mayhem for the Ohio Bobcats. They upset Michigan. 65 to 60. The 13th seed in the Midwest region is moving on. They did it two years ago against Georgetown. They've done it again. Ohio advances to Sunday here in Nashville. They'll play the winner of Temple and South Florida. Coming up here on TNT. Tournament games continue on CBS, TBS, and True TV. Coming up, South Florida Temple here on TNT. For Jim Spinarco, Lewis Johnson, this is Ian Eagle. We'll send it back to our studios after these messages. Ohio wins in Nashville.